So in this video, we're going to look at calculating uh, the formula, deriving the formula for the arc length of a function. And we're basically going to start with the idea of the Pythagorean theorem. So suppose we have a crazy function f of x, whatever, however we define it. And we want to find the, the distance length of the curve from the point at one end to the point at the other. Now, obviously, if this curve was a straight line, then the straight line distance from one point to the other would, in fact, be the length. But from this example, we can see that the function does not actually do that. But we can think of the straight line distance here as essentially a minimum uh, distance for our, for our formula. And so if we calculate that directly, we just basically use the distance formula. B minus A squared is the length in X and F of B minus F of A squared is the length in the Y direction. And again, again, if this was a straight line, this would be the solution, but we want to find the sort of more general approach to this. And so one strategy that we can use is we can use this distance formula but we, if we want to get a more accurate estimate, what we can do is we can break down the graph into a bunch of different points uh, and calculate the arc length essentially on shorter segments. That will get us a better calculation, a better estimate for the graph. So in this particular case, I've broken the function down into 11 smaller pieces. And we can see that here's one piece right here. Here's the second piece right here. Here's the second piece right here. In each of these cases along the curve, I'm essentially picking two points and I'm calculating the straight line distance between them. And then there's another piece here. And there's another piece here and here and here and here and here and here. So there's 11 total pieces. And where the curve is more or less going straight, we can see that we're following the curve pretty closely and we're doing a much better job of getting the true length of arc than we were on the previous example on the just one straight piece. But we're still missing, we're still a little short, uh, especially as we turn around the curves, um, the function changes direction and we're not getting as good an approximation. Uh, we would do slightly better if our breakpoints were actually off the, at the peak of the curve, but even so, it would still be a little less than what we would expect, but it's getting better. So again, we're using the same distance formula here. In each one of these cases, we're starting at x sub i, so one of our breakpoints, and then we're going to the next x sub i, which is a fixed distance away, uh, or some distance away. And then that's giving us our delta x sub i because the x i's are getting canceled out. And then in our uh, y direction, we're taking the stopping point f of x sub i plus delta x sub i, the that function evaluated at the second point, and then subtracting the function evaluated at the first point. And when we simplify this, this numerator is starting to look awfully suspiciously familiar. This is in fact the numerator for our definition of the derivative. So what essentially what we're doing is we're taking the arc length, the length of these little straight line segments, and we're adding them up. And, and as we add them up, we get the approximate arc length. But if we let the limit as n of n goes to infinity, so instead of doing a finite number of these estimates, we do more and more and more of them. We break them up into more and more smaller and smaller subsegments. Um, that will get us better and better estimates for the true arc length. And so that is our general strategy here. So this is our sort of formula for each one of the subunits. And we're going to let the limit go um, to infinity. So let's think about 
what limit are we actually doing the, the limit for? Well, we wanna rearrange a little bit of our arc length formula. So recall we had this formula right here for our little um, subsegments. And so what we're gonna do is in order to simplify this a little further, get this look more like something familiar, I'm gonna find a common denominator by multiplying the numerator here, uh, um, this expression here, I'm gonna multiply the whole thing under the radical by delta I squared over delta I squared. Now there's a reason for that, but um, one of the reasons for that is that I want to be able to pull stuff out of the expression. So um, it, if, I, if I multiply this squared term, this, this expression right here by that, then I can actually pull some tricks here. So one thing that I can do, if I have another I, the delta I squared in the denominator here, is that now I have um, a delta I squared over delta I squared, which is a one. Now, and then more importantly, this expression is going to give me a, derivative. Now, again, we said before that this term looked like the numerator of our derivative. This now looks a lot more like just the square of our derivative because we can pull the square out and this is what we end up with. This is a derivative as we let delta x go to zero in the limit. This is our derivative function. And the reason that we multiplied by this is because I I, I, I needed this thing in my denominator, but I didn't actually need this thing here. When I wanted it, I didn't want it in the numerator per se, but I wanted an extra copy that I could now pull outside of my square root. Because this thing, when we take the integral, this thing is going to become our dx. So I'm killing two birds with one stone here. I'm putting something in the denominator so I can simplify this expression to one. I have an extra copy that I can then pull outside the radical and take the square root of. And then I have um, this expression where I can turn that into a derivative. And now I have a simplification that I can use. And I can just turn this whole expression into f prime squared. So again, I haven't, I haven't taken the limit yet. All I've done is do rearrange some algebra so that each little segment of the graph, instead of using the distance formula, I've now rearranged it so that I'm using the square root of one plus F prime squared and then times the length of my segment in X. Well, again, if we take our sum of all of these together, and then we take our limit, what we've basically done is we have taken our function, some kind of function, we'll call it g, the square root of one plus f prime of x squared, that's a function times delta x, we're summing it, and then letting the limit go to zero. This is by definition our integral formula. And so we're just substituting our g of x in the definition here for this square root expression. And so what we're, we've done then is we can take this summation formula and turn it into an integral. And so we're gonna integrate from a to b, and then we're gonna integrate this crazy function. And then that will give us the length of our arc even if the function is curved. Now, one thing to kind of keep in mind uh, with this formula is that um, it's often very easy to set up. Um, it's often very difficult to integrate by hand. Only certain kinds of functions will end up being uh, integrable by hand. Um, but in, in the worst case scenario, we can always resort to numerical integration.